tonight, you know, there comes a time in your life when there's just nothing more to say. There's just no words that can comfort the hurting. There's just no emotions to describe the hopelessness and the helplessness that one sometimes feel. Sometimes children have tempers. They throw temper tantrums. Pundits would say, that's normal. It's an everyday part of learning. It's a process of learning to deal with emotions. And so it's normal. We should not try to break our children out of it. That's how they learn. But what happens when the occasional temper tantrum becomes a pattern of consistent violent behavior? Yesterday, on my way home, I was inundated with calls and I'm thinking what's going on it's like one call after another after another after another and you know I figure somebody must really need to talk to me so I pull up on the side of the road pick up the call did you hear did I hear what did you hear about the the chopping the latest chopping incident I said, oh my gosh, don't tell me these fools, these ghetto youth are still at it. And now they've put down the guns and they've picked up what? Knives and machetes. And they really should not be surprised. But I was stunned to find out that the, the culprits this time were two teenage school goers. Two teenage schoolgoers. Now, some of you who are old enough to remember would remember that in 97, I think, 97, 98, our world as we knew it was rocked, shocked to its very core, very foundation, when a particular principal was chopped within an inch of her life, disfigured by one of her students. A few years later, a teacher was mauled by one of her students because she asked him to remove his cap on his head while he was in class. Even a few years later, this one, maybe about four years ago, a lone female student, a female teacher, was assaulted by three students at her school. Now, in each of these separate incidents, one common theme ran through, one theme was common amongst everything else. What did the teacher or teachers do to feel the wrath of these children? What could they have possibly done that these children would react in such a violent manner? It must have been the teacher's fault. It must have been the principal's fault. They must have done something to provoke such a violent reaction, such an aggressive reaction from these students in each of these three separate incidents. A couple weeks ago, President Trump proclaimed that he would make it possible for teachers in the U.S to be armed with guns so that when, when violent perpetrators enter the school and start shooting it up, they would be able to defend themselves and the students by shooting back. 
last last evening or last yesterday afternoon two students got at it one chopping the other within an inch of his life and i thought to myself hmm after the initial furor and and anxiety and and angst and all of the descriptive words that you could possibly use to describe how I was feeling it because it was a moment of, you, you know, like you, you just tense, you, you're anxious, you, you, what's happening? Was the, the, the chopping fatal? What's happening with the student, the victim? Where is the student? Where is the, the culprit? What's happening? After all of that, when I sat down and I thought about it and I, I thought to myself, would this have happened in the States? Would the, pri the president now be proposing that teachers come armed with machetes? Then I thought, this was traumatizing for me. I wasn't at the school. I got the information secondhand, but it was traumatizing for me. How traumatizing. How tumultuous must it have been for the teachers and the students alike? Because let's not forget, there are teachers who have to view this mayhem. They have to take in this carnage and they can do absolutely nothing about it. Imagine as a teacher Being helpless, standing on the sidelines, watching your student chop another of your student and be able to do nothing about it. Call the police. They're going to take a while to get there. What are you going to do? Treat them like dogs? Wet them? What do you do in a situation like that? How do you cope? You're traumatized. How do you comfort and counsel and be a pillar of support for your remaining students? How do you do it? How do you cope? Other counselors at the schools to deal with that sort of discord to deal with that sort of mayhem because believe me you if i being so far removed from the incident felt so traumatized i needed to speak with somebody about it how do you suppose the students felt seeing their colleagues their classmates kill each other how do you suppose the teachers deal knowing that perhaps throughout the day they taught, they were in close proximity to a potential murderer? How do you think that they cope or that they deal with not seeing the signs, not being able, or maybe seeing the signs, but, but not having the skill set to deal with. How do you tell a parent, I think your child is disturbed? How do you tell a parent, something is wrong with your kid? He needs to seek professional help. How do you tell a parent who perhaps could ill afford to send the child to school. That you need to get specific, specialized education for your child, we cannot provide here. How do the teachers cope? How do the students who have to be at school, who had to be at school today, I wonder, how many students came to school? I wonder the trepidation that parents may have felt knowing that they have no option but to send their child back 
to such a destabilizing environment? How would you feel? How would you cope? Now, in the first three incidents I mentioned earlier, I mentioned about the principal who was hacked at um, a school. I talked about a teacher who was mauled by one of her students. And I talked about another teacher who was assaulted by three of her students about four years ago. Notice a common thread? Female teachers being attacked by male students. And in all of these cases, half of us hipped the blame without knowing the full cause and effect of the, of the, of the circumstance, hipped the blame on the teachers. The teachers are rude. The teachers do not afford respect to the, the students. It must have been the teacher's fault. But whose fault is it when the victim is a student? Whose fault is it when the victim is a student being chopped by his own classmate. From reports that I've heard, there was nothing major going on. Petty, petty, petty issues were at the heart of this latest chopping incident at our schools, at our nation's educational systems but was it petty was the straw that broke the camel's back really the cause of the camel's back being broken you know oftentimes we take and we take and we take and we take and we take with no end in sight we bear abuse upon abuse. We say nothing. We do nothing. And then we snap. And then it's chaos. Is this the case? Is this what happened with those students? Will we ever know? Or, in inimitable, typical St. Lucian style, will we take this latest incident and sweep it under the rug? Will we seek answers? Will we call for answers? Will we demand answers? You know, earlier today in the newscast, I heard the Minister of Education talking about how unfortunate an incident, and it really irks me to hear her and others describe that incident as unfortunate. That is not an unfortunate incident. Unfortunate incident is taking a calculated risk and losing all of your money. Unfortunate incident is wearing the wrong shoes twisting your ankle, breaking it. An unfortunate incident is driving with bad tires and not expecting to get into an accident. These are a series of unfortunate incidents. What happened yesterday was tragic. Tragic. Two lives directly altered beyond repair not to mention the countless other lives that were indirectly impacted the principals the teachers the students the caretakers the parents the communities that these children came from 
that was a tragic incident. And I, for one, would have loved to have heard more about what is going to happen in the immediate future, not in the unforeseen future or, you know, measures that are going to take time to unroll. What is going to happen today, tomorrow, next week? That is what I wanted. I wanted to know that persons were called into a caucus emergency what are we going to do but guess what that's not going to happen because this is not the first time this has happened and it won't be the last i dare say and guess what nothing will change so it's all good and well not wanting to see police patrolling our schools not wanting to see armed guards at our schools but what are we doing to fix our schools what are we doing to fix our homes our communities to ensure that we raise children who are going to be meaningful contributors to our economy to our society to our st lucia we've just celebrated independence not one week ago not more than one week ago we celebrated independence and we were so happy to chant i am st lucia but are we really are we really parents are we really community members? When we cuss each other out with impunity in front of our children, mm? when we smack each other about, mm? when we claim that we love our wives and we smack them about like so much garbage, like a rag doll, simply because they didn't do something that we expected them to do. Mm? When we belittle our men, our men folk, our husbands, our boyfriends, hmm? call them gogo -go and all sorts of derogatory names. What do you think our children are thinking when they hear us use these demeaning words to others? So, no, it's not an unfortunate incident. This was a storm in a teacup waiting to happen. We refuse to learn from our mistakes, from our past. Refuse. When something happens to us, you know what happens? We turn our backs. So yes, I was disappointed when Dr. Morella Joseph left teaching. Of course I was. Because I felt she had been given a tragic gift to help shape education in this country. And the countless other teachers who were handed the same tragic gift to impact, to make a difference, to help change and shape and mold our children beyond the walls of the schools. To manifest the pledge that they took when they became teachers to help shape and mold and, and, and change the landscape of St. Lucia. So yes, I was disappointed. But you know who I was disappointed in more? Who I continue to be disappointed in? Us. Us, St. Lucians. Because at the end of the day, what we have done is fail our, our children. We have failed the future generation of St. Lucia. We have failed because we turn our backs and forget conveniently and willfully that our children are crying out and that the reason that they're acting out is because they're manifesting what they see in us adults. What they're putting on, what they're showing is a manifestation of what they live and suffer through on a daily basis in their homes. So yes, I am disappointed in us because we incubate these monsters in our homes and in our, com in our communities, whether directly or indirectly, whether it is by the things that we say we do, the way that we act, or vice versa, 
by the lack thereof. How many times have we seen students loitering about the city and the communities and stop to find out why? A lot of the times we put the blame square on the parents as it should. Sometimes we blame the students because we say they're willful, you know, they're disrespectful to adults, you know. But do we ask ourselves, do they have a place to go after school? Where are their parents? Did their parents make provision for them to be somewhere? Do the parents even care that they're not at home? Because I can tell you something. I was well on my way to my 20s when if I had better be somewhere, I was there because my parents did not play like that. And I didn't live at home, but I adhered to the rules. That didn't mean I wasn't feisty. That didn't mean I didn't have an opinion. That didn't mean I was broken in spirit. It simply meant I knew my boundaries. I knew which battles to choose. I knew my priorities because as, at a tender age, I was groomed. I was groomed to be a meaningful, meaningfully contributing member of society, regardless which society I chose to make my home. Didn't mean I didn't get into my scripts. Didn't mean I didn't make mistakes. Didn't mean I didn't have fun. Didn't mean I was a stick in the mud. So why do some of us, why are some of us well-adjusted and why are some of us destined to go down in a fiery ball of flames? We're due for a break. When we come back, we'll continue our discussion on why some children react violently. Stay tuned. Thank you for staying tuned to what's happening now with Laura. And tonight, I don't have a guest. I don't know where my guest is actually. Um, just never showed up. But that's okay. That's okay because I really wanted to have a heart-to-heart -heart with you on the state of our children. When on any given day you can hear a chopping incident. I mean, it used to be. It used to be that we only heard about these things overseas. Yeah? We only heard about these things in the United States of America, where some gunman just came into a school and started shooting up the place. You know, oftentimes, oftentimes in recent past, it's been a past student, a student who's just gone berserk, you know, gone postal, and, and, and just gone in there and just started shooting up people. And we've just had an incident like this not too long ago, not more than two weeks ago, where an, a, a past student of a school in Florida just decided to come up and, sh come and shoot up the place, killing three teachers and 14 students. Can you imagine sending your child out to school, to a place which is supposed to be a sanctuary, to a place where their minds and their bodies are supposed to be shipped to cope with the outside world and all of the mayhem and all of the discord and all of the tyranny. And getting that fateful call saying that your child isn't coming home this afternoon. Your child isn't coming home this evening. Your child isn't coming home at all. And that could have very well been the case 
yesterday afternoon. I mean, how more premeditated does it take or does it have to be to come to school with a concealed weapon to go through the entire day, the entire morning, seemingly normal, waiting for that prime opportunity to pounce and create destruction. How mental must you be? How cold must you be? What must have happened in your life to so adversely affect you that you bring to school with you a machete, a cutlass, with the sole purpose, aim, and intention of killing. I don't think of hurting. I think of killing because when I think of where this young man was chopping his classmate, his colleague, that's not intended to hurt. That's intended to kill. The question remains though, where is the culprit? Where is he now? Has he been caught? Is somebody out there willfully hiding this young man? And if you are, aiding and abetting, do you think that you're doing a good thing, honestly? Do you think that you are acting in the best interest of this young man? How do you factor, how do you figure that by hiding him, by concealing him, that you're doing something good? Would it not be better to get him some help? to get him some assistance. You know, I heard, I think I'm going to just let you hear and then we're going to discuss that. The, the, the minister's words about the unfortunate incident which took place at the secondary school yesterday. Are we ready with the clip? Okay, so I think we might have be having a little technical difficulty here, but we'll come back to that. Yes. Education Minister Dr. Gail Rigobert has described the chopping incident as quite unfortunate. While she did not want to say much on the matter, which is currently under investigation, Dr. Rigobert believes that this latest incident has revived calls for proper counselors and social workers to be installed at schools as the situation seemed to be a more social one. So very often we focus on the punitive measures and I've been emphasizing a greater infusion of resources to deal with preventative measures. So for example, during our budget talks, one of the things that our Prime Minister has indicated is that he is willing to offer perhaps 11 or 12 more social workers. And uh, I think I will hasten to suggest that if we cannot get a similar number in terms of school counselors, perhaps he can offer me half of those to put into the school system, um, counselors, not social workers, because these are very, very different skill sets. But evidently we need more social we, we need more counselors in schools. We need more counselors in schools because we recognize early intervention can be effective. Preventative measures are what we need right now. I don't want to see 
police walking the, compa the, the school compound. I don't want to see a school cordoned off in the way that PI Secondary School has had to be cordoned off. Were there not behavioral issues that we could have readily identified in those two individuals um, that perhaps would have raised a red flag, so to speak, and that a counselor could have intervened? What about mediation? What about conflict resolution? Does it have to be violent? The education minister believes that children are influenced by what they see happening in their home and in their communities, and as a result, will be implementing a project throughout schools on the island that will provide students with coping skills. One of the things that we've, we've uh, brainstormed, and I'm hoping that we can roll out maybe at the start of the next academic year, is what we call a wraparound kind of project. Too very often, we deal with the problems um, piecemeal or or as disparate and separate entities. So for example, a child is displaying behavioral disorders or is, is proving to be deviant and we endeavor to treat with the child alone. Increasingly, we recognize that you have to deal with the entire circle. So you deal with the child, you deal with the family setting and you address the issues surrounding those that may lead to that kind of, of the uh, deviant behavior. It could be an economic situation, it could be a social issue, it could be parenting, it could be neighborhood influence, so that we deal with the situation in totality. The issue of school security was also highlighted by the education minister as she believes Monday's incident underscores the need for the issue to be addressed. On the table as we speak, are about three options. We recognize that in the school system we have watchmen who double up as caretakers as well and uh, given the sophistication that we know that those prone to commit crime are, are familiar with, we find it necessary to equip our watchmen similarly with the skills and the tools to respond appropriately. Within the, the confines of a school we recognize that whether it be break-ins or violent incidents, we need to address the situation. We have therefore put in place a training for caretakers already on staff who have some basic capacity and some core competencies that we can further develop. In that regard, we are partnering with the Royal San Lucia Police Force to offer that training um, sometime during the break. One of the difficulties that we've had with respect to delivering the training is that one, uh, some of the watchmen double up as caretakers, two, that sometimes there are no relief workers, so should they be absorbed in a training program, we do not want to leave the schools exposed or even more vulnerable. And, and three, we continue to toy with the idea of uh, whether it is we should engage private security firms. For the DBS News World, I am Sheffield Gillard. Thank you. Now, the number of things, for me, I see wrong with what the minister was talking about. Yay, all good and well. We're asking for more counselors after the cows have bolted. We're asking for more counselors. You think it's now? I was a student at secondary school. I was a student. I haven't, I don't even re, let's not even go there. But it's been a while, needless to say, that I've, since I've left secondary school and we've been asking for counselors and asking for more counselors and asking and asking and asking, but we're not making it happen. You're in a position to make it happen. Now it's funny. You know, let me just not go there. Because a lot of the who's who in society will come up with all of the answers purportedly, but their, their children don't attend school in St. Lucia. I wonder why. I wonder why. You know? We want to know what's happening now. We want to know. I mean, you're looking at having all oh, the watchman to double up as... In that kind of distress, in that case where a child is so full of rage, so full of rage, that he is chopping like an animal, like a cow, a pig to the slaughter. Somebody he sits on a school bench with every day. He sees every day. He interacts with every day. Watchman la kaivini to boot or get in the way of it. Come on. Seriously, 
Seriously. Now, the lines are open for 5197-88 is the, the number to call. And you can send me your WhatsApp messages as you have already begun doing on 284-6536. I dare not ask you to send me an email because lately I've been getting the emails after the show has ended. Um, so you, you wanna, if you want to take a chance to do that, that's fine. But you can send me a WhatsApp message on 284-6536 or you can give us a call at 451-9788. You know, but one of the things that one of the viewers have just mentioned is the schools have counselors, but the counselors are reactionary. They're reactive. They're not proactive. Why are you waiting for a child to do something before, before you intervene? We have our first call online. Thank you for calling. You're on the air. I am the first call again. Yes, you are. Thank you very much. Um, I just appreciate a lot between the pen and what you're talking about. But mm -hmm. thanks God I heard you again. You see those kids we're talking about our kids. Mm -hmm. It's it's a lot to a problem to some of us to train them and Seeing who giving money, who spending money, who whatever. Because if you talk, the same giving money, you just want to say you are against them. So it's a lot. So the, the, the family, the, 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 the whatever you, your point going through, a lot for the school. Thanks God I don't have a youth going to school. I will have little little one coming, but not yet. All my youth is big. But I know for sure. I telling you, respect. Not giving joke for no little girls I see out of school to see they coming in my home or in my yard and say I have a man there. So go to school or go to your parents. When you're ready, you can come home. I just appreciate you a lot. Thank you, sir. A lot, a lot. I, I, when I choose taking the, the, the remote, I see you. <laughs> I couldn't pass with her. <laughs> Real. Thank you very much. Thank you. And go through your program. One day we'll, we'll we, summer we, and parents will understand. And those girls that outside there, they will understand a man and a little girl and a little boy. Because they're getting pregnant fast, but who fit in them? Mm. True. Thank you so did, much. Did, yeah. did, did they have a house or they have a current? They don't know. Thank you very much. Thank and you. go to the program. And I love you every day by the grace of God. Don't mind I don't call you. Sometimes I don't have money on my phone. But loving together. Thank you so much for calling and for sharing with and us. One minute. What day with you, my girl? Thank you very much. Make us wise. Thank you very much. I'll try my best. Welcome. Yes. Now, some of you have been sending um, messages, and, and one of the things, and, and, and as I said, the number of things that the minister said in the clip, and I'm, I, I would want to give her the benefit of the doubt. This station has taken a deliberately attempt, a deliberate decision rather not to mention the name of the school not to mention the name of the students here we are trying to protect and to give some peace of mind to teachers and parents and the minister in her wisdom or maybe she wasn't thinking i'd like to give her the benefit of the doubt that it was a slip of the tongue is naming names and I'm getting my, 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 my WhatsApp platform is blowing up of people who were who are absolutely enraged over this. 
And you know, they're already likening it if it were another school, a top tier school, would she have named the names of the school? Sometimes you have to be more careful um, when we're speaking and to think before we say the things that we say. And it happens to all of us. It happens to all of us. Um, somebody else Somebody else has said, we're waiting, we're waiting for an incident to happen. The schools have counselors, but they're waiting for an incident to happen to then counsel. Could we not, or could the, the, the counselors not recognize that there is a problem child and try to create a certain sort of intervention to waylay any possible uh, um, occasion like what happened yesterday. We have another call online. Thank you Hi, for holding. Night, and how are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? I'm not too bad, thanks. Mm -hmm. I'm there watching your program, but like, for me, that's the first time I heard about that. <laughs> so, you know, the reason why I going to work and come back, mm -hmm. there's be so tired, not at all times, I just watching the TV, mm -hmm. you know? But it is so true about what the minister set out. Some um, parents, I can tell you, some parents, children seeing things happen at home and they're going to go into the school and do it. Because my area, my area, they got some children about 9 and 10, no, 5 and 10, like that. One, at the age of 4, I stand up underneath my garage. A child 4 years, my last daughter is 20-something, and my granddaughter is 18 years old. And the child watching at me and saying, um, she said to me twice, and the third time, she made magic for me. I can be a grandparent, I can be a mother, and I can be a mother murder. So then I called her mother. I said to the mother, it seems to be you haven't got a child. It seems you have a woman. She did it to me third time. If she continues to do it to me again, you know what I'll do? I'll go to a human rights or I'll bring a policeman for her because it seems to be she's a woman, you understand? Mm. If, a ch if you're a child, you consider you a child, you have to say, and I say to the mother, they're passing, they doesn't say um, good morning, they just curse by my house, they just do a month of things by my house, you understand? I doesn't take it for granted. But I raise up three children with my husband, and then them three children, before they leave the house, I used to tell them, and then, if any children and call me, I can never bring them back home and say, I'll deal with you all in the house. You don't do nothing home. I can't deal with you all home in the school. I always used to say to them, see what car and what? See what car and what? See what me prize up? Pack it, maybe me and the color there's up. And then, thanks to God be the glory, they heard my voice. And they understand my voice. No teacher never said and called me. The only thing they just said and called me for, they're not talking in the class. They will tell me, Madam, what's the problem with your children's room? What's going on in the room? They know already what I punched to them. You understand? So they're doing their work properly, properly, properly. My first daughter, she used to pop um, the school, um, three of them, one coming out first, one coming out second, one coming out third. Sometimes she first, sometimes she second. So I say to her, if you're in first gear, try to stay in first gear. I don't want you to go in second gear. First is the best. Once she came from, she come out third. I beat her backside. And she said, Mommy, I'm sorry. I didn't study you properly. And from that time, she left school. She's 37 now. And watch her now. Watch them. I got three of them. And I'm so happy about myself. I am proud of myself. I'm proud of my husband. So now I haven't got a husband. My husband passed away. When my husband passed away, my last daughter, she was turning 12. And I raised her up, up a day like today. She can't do what she wants with me. You understand? And I think children, young parents, they say they're parents. And they are children. When they're doing things in front of people, they're not calling their children. They're not putting a stop. But, why do, you think, but why, do, why do you think that young parents... Are like that because I, I I would think that if you they were raised if they were raised like you are saying you raised your children that this is how they would raise their own children so why do you think that they don't raise Li their children like that? We, uh, listen, when there are children from school, you have to um, put your children sit down and ask them what you learn at school. Let me have a look of your book. 
What you what the teacher say to you? What you do at school? Let me have a look in your bag. Everything like that, you understand? And then from that, when you see the term, during the term, you have to take steps, go to the school and ask the children, how your children, how your child doing at school? How she performing? You have to take the report book and open the report book and see her grade, how her grade. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's the thing you have to follow up. And then, like, some parents think, like, is giving their child an uh, expensive shoe for 150 that's the best important thing for them. Instead of giving them a shoe for $20, they're going above 150 and they, they're not giving them exercise book, they're not disciplining their children. It's a worst thing time. But every day, I thank God. Every day, I thank God for raising up my children. It's my husband. But as I say, my husband passed away when my last daughter, she was turning 12. And praise God, I raised her up. And she do a good job. She writes seven subjects. She get all seven in the name of Jesus. You understand? So I'm so happy about myself. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing and for calling and sharing. Thanks for so much for calling and sharing with us your 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 experience. And and you know, you know, oftentimes I hear um all the parents talk about how they raise their children. And I wonder where did they, and maybe not necessarily every single one of them, but what happened that the next generation now are raising kids who fall, fall you know, within the cracks? What happened? Aren't we supposed to be building on our foundation? Aren't we supposed to be building up on what our parents taught us? Aren't we supposed to be... Get becoming better and better, but it seems that we're receding, we're rescinding, we're getting worse, we're regressing, you know. And um, some of the things that would have caused a child to behave aggressive sometimes it's a mental disorder, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. We have another call online. Thank you for calling. You're on the air. Hello, good night, miss. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. I think what's happening right now is that there's a lack of spirituality. And what happened, in my opinion, is there was a, a lack of transfer information from one generation to the next. A lack of what, sorry? Information, mm -hmm. passing down, you know, spirituality, mm -hmm. values, core values, manners, all of these good practices that was not transferred from one generation to the next. So if, if there's no transfer of the good values, then you have a generation that's lacking and there's nothing to pass on to the next generation. But why generation. do you think that they would not, if it's, a, it's a, so good, the values that we were raised with were so mm -hmm. good, why do you think that they're not passing those values on to the next generation? Well, one of the things that I believe is that a lot of the parents now want um, their, their children to be their best friends. So we have um, persons treating their, their, their children like their best friends and, and not parent to child, but you have besties or best friends, you know? So that's what I believe is happening, lack of spirituality and not enforcing rules, core values, and there's just a decay in St. Lucia, a decay all over the world. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how we can make it better. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing um, your, this opinion with us. I think, you know, it's, it's and I, 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 you know, oftentimes you can't tell how young a person is or how old a person is because some people have very youthful voices. And they, but this last caller sounded like a younger person, and I'm very appreciative that she actually called and shared what she thought was um, the breakdown in, in, in our society. We have a call online? Okay, so we lost that call. Um, in response to the WhatsApper, which said that, you know, sometimes the counselors, they wait until something has happened for them to now counsel, and they counsel one-on-one -on -one rather than in, in, in groupings, in settings. And I think that's one of the things that I applauded the um, um, minister, because she said sometimes something happens and then we counsel one-on-one, -on -one, but we don't go within the, the, the wider grouping and counsel them together as mu much as we counsel them one-on-one, -on -one, that there should be a group setting. But somebody else is saying that the students themselves refuse the counseling. Refuse the counseling. And that same caller is identifying him or herself as a secondary school student and saying that drug addiction is 
a main issue at school for deviant behavior, drug addiction. We have another call online. I think I'm talking too much. So we, our calls are dropping. Um, but keep calling, keep calling. But I, 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 I wanted to, to really stress on that, the drug addiction part. We have another call online. Thank you for calling. Good evening. Good evening. I am 60 years of age. 60. I raised my children. I had five children. I raised them with discipline, manners, and everything my mother raised me with. But today's young people, they look at this as torture. They don't teach their children to say thank you. They don't teach them to say please. They don't teach them to say beg your pardon. They don't teach their children to say nothing because to them it is torture. Some of them is as far as saying, I do not raise my children the way my mother raised me. That was a slave trade mentality. I do not beat my child. The Bible tells you, spare the road and spoil the child. If you correct that child early, later on in life, that child will not make you ashamed. You understand what I'm saying, ma'am? Mm -hmm. So, when we don't, when the young people today don't want to discipline their children, this is what they get. This is exactly what they get. So they create their own devils. They sit at their homes. They gossip about people with their children. They do all the wrong things. When we came from school, when my children came from school, I said to them, 3 o'clock, 4 over, the latest is quarter to 4. I didn't know my children to go and sit by the library or walking in town. I didn't know my children to do that. Because guess what? When school over, they know they have to come home to wash the dishes, go get grass for the rabbits, did, did you the chicken. Oh, I'm glad you said about the <laughs> get grass you for know? the rabbits. We just had a, in my family, we just had a little co a conversation about that. We were just laughing about whose turn it is to go tie the sheep. So, wash the dishes. Yes, but let me ask you, let me, let me ask you something. When did you, were you a stay at home mom or, or did you work outside of the home? I worked outside the home. My, I, my darling, I worked 22 years in the hotel industry. Really? In the hotel industry. And how yes. did you ensure that your children got home? Because that's one of the things that we always say that has been a problem plaguing our society Ma, is the I advent of the hotels. Protocol. protocol. I say three o'clock school over, quarter to four for the latest. So how did you know that they were at home for the latest quarter to four? How did I had you? My spies. Oh, you had your spies. So community wo community worked yes. then. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's true what they say about taking a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. You cannot do it on your own, my lady. Wonderful. And that's what we don't have. We don't have a village anymore. We don't have community because everybody put a fence around their house. And everybody thinks that they are better than everybody else. Oh, my child is very nice, so I don't... Oh, I'm so... You know? Everybody thinks they're bigger than everybody else. Wonderful. I live in an area... Many people will not like me. That's how I feel eh, in the area. But when my children was going to school, if my children had done anything wrong on the streets or anywhere, Though they may not talk to me. You know, they'll throw it, to, throw it at me as foul GT. Human beings. We are. We are. You can. You can. You perfect pass it. Took money. You show your cafe. Tell, tell, bad guy. Right away, I pick it up. Eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand what mm -hmm. I'm telling you? Mm -hmm. They will not come in my face and tell me. I saw your son doing that. Or I saw your daughter doing that. But they'll throw it for me as foul GT. Right. You know, I, I agree with a lot of the things that you said because a lot of it um, resonated with me because it's the, the way I was raised. But I am one of those persons, if I had children, I would be one of those parents who say I don't beat my children. My nieces, my nephew, I don't raise my hand on them. Very rarely, very seldom do I physically punish them. Um, however, I speak to them. And I remember one time my niece, my first niece was about three years old. And I spoke with her and she was so angry. She was upset about something that her mother did. And I put her on my knees and I spoke to her. And my mom says, oh my gosh, if it were me, you know, so I said to her, but mommy, what can she tell you? What will she learn 
about when you beat her. What all she will learn is now I'm going to be afraid of mom. I'm going to be afraid of grandma. Now, however, let me just finish this point. Mm -hmm. However, these kids have never embarrassed me in public. Not As a matter of fact, people. one Christmas I took them out. We were out shopping, and then my nephew asked for something, and my niece asked for something else. And I said to them, um, not this time. And they're like, okay, auntie. And a lady remarked, wow. They just said, okay, like it's Christmas time, yes. all of these toys and everything, and they're not throwing up a bigger fuss. I said, my kids know better than that. They Let know that it doesn't take Christmas to get something from auntie. Exactly. So they're, they're, they have respect. They know, they're disciplined. They know that you're not going to act out in public and expect to get away with it, despite exactly. the fact that I don't use corporal punishment. But there are other ways, and you speak with your there children. There are other ways. You speak with your children, so you reason with them, because they are human beings. They're just little people. Thank you. I used to say to my children, and my husband had a problem with that. I used to say to my children, listen, if I call you and ask you to do something for me, and you don't feel like doing it, tell me, mommy, not now. But don't tell me just now and you never come. Mm -hmm. I understand not now because you are a human being. Mm -hmm. You have your mood swings. It's not because you're a child you don't have mood swings. Because I know as a child I have mood swings too. As Remember a matter of fact, that's when, they have most, that. that's when they have most mood swings is when they're exactly. kids because their emotions, they're coming, becoming adults. They're switching, they're transitioning from being a child dependent on mommy and daddy for everything and becoming a person who can make decisions for, the, for themselves, who can think of think for themselves so it's not every time mommy says come do this that they want to do it but out of respect for they will you understand what i'm saying okay. so you just have to reason with your children another thing you don't have to always beat children sit them down i never beat my children if i didn't give them the reason for beating i would not just fall into beating blah 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 blah, blah. how many times have i said you don't do that and this is for that, and this is for that, and this is for that. You understand? Mm -hmm. My children, I'll just, if they're doing something out of the way, I'll just turn and open my eyes, look at them hard, and everybody's in order. Or just use a stern voice. Didn't I say don't do that? Another thing, when I go out with my children, before I leave my house, I tell them, listen, we're going to X, Y, Z, a place. I have X amount of money. Don't ask me for nothing until I tell you, look. We go to town and we come back. If I feel like taking you to KFC or wherever, okay, it's lunchtime. I'll take you to KFC. I'll take you somewhere. That is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But so they become they, they are ah. appreciative of those little treats. They don't begin to expect it. They don't think they're entitled to it. No. The young gener today's generation is going about it bad. But then I wonder, did we do such a good job? And I'm not obviously not talking about you, but generally speaking, the, 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 the older generation did such a bang up job. If the younger generation is dropping all what they're teaching and picking up a more laissez faire, a more I'm your friend type um, attitude. But I want to thank you. We have a few more calls um, coming through, oh, but I want to thank you so much for sharing. I, yes. loved, I loved our banter. I, I, you know, it, it was great. So keep watching and keep calling. All right. Then. Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye. Nice. Yes, but she's, she's quite right. I mean, you have to reason with your children. I, I personally don't see anything wrong with if a parent wanted to spank the child. But that's totally different from abusing your child and raining licks making them cough up blood that's abuse we have another call online thank you for calling hello good night laura hi good night i am calling from library mm -hmm. um let me see if i recognize I the know voice you well and you know me well right mm -hmm. and laura the older generation did not do a bang up job okay mm -hmm. because the way i was raised laura you hear? Laura, I raised my children, five children, and I raised them the way my mother raised me. And my children raised their children the way I raised them. And Laura, I want to say to you that we are living in times, in prophecy times. You hear? The prophecies must fulfill. You hear? 
The Bible says, um, you nations will rise up against nations. Children will rise up against their parents. And you know the rest, etc. And this is exactly, Laura, what is happening to our generation today. You hear? They are rising up. There is a part where it says in the scripture, I don't know if you recall, if you know about it, but where it speaks about a generation of viper. Laura, you know what is a viper. Viper is a snake with a bad venom, right? And this is what is going on today, Laura. Laura, the children of today, is not that the older folks did a bang-up job, Laura. Children are rebelling by them own by their own selves, Laura. But why? Like but the, but there the must be something that that causes that. Th no, that... Laura. Laura, the children of today, they are not putting their faith and their trust in the Creator. The Word of God says in Ecclesiastes, right? Remember the Creator in the days of thy youth. And Laura, our children today are not doing that. You hear? And we must realize too that some other children out there, right? These children maybe did not raise properly. And our children who were raised properly, when they go out there, they're pressure. You hear, Laura? Mm -hmm. And this, and like you said, sometimes our children have has problems, mental problems. You understand? So all of these factor in and causes our children of today to behave in strange ways. You understand? And this is what I want to say to you. Laura, I'm looking at you. You know me well. You know me well. I am looking at you, Laura. You know me well. You know where I sit in church, Laura. I sit exactly behind my sister. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, thank you, Laura. And you are doing a good job. Thank I you. do. I watch you every Tuesday. Thank Continue you. to do the good job that you are doing. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. And, right. and, and I, love, I love this kind of discourse. I mean, I may not totally agree with everything that everybody says, and everybody's not going to agree with everything everybody says. But let's be open. Let's have a discourse. Let's, let's get around the table. Let's try to figure it out. Before this call, I was trying to say that there are conditions that affect our children. And a lot of the times, and I'm glad at the end that she talked about a little bit about mental disorder. Some of it is mental. Because a lot of us still have mental disorder as a taboo. As if to say, it is something to be ashamed of. It is something to be ashamed of. One of the, my WhatsAppers talked about drug addiction in schools are we equipped to handle drug addiction in schools are our teachers or are we expecting our teachers to move herculean tasks with pebbles you understand are, are we expecting them to be samson's without the hair without the strength because I would know, I know, I, and, and, and I don't need anybody to confirm because I have seen, I've been around it enough to be, be at schools that have a huge, a big enough proportion of the population with learning disabilities. As if these schools are warehouses. Warehouses to just keep these children and because there's nowhere else to put them, whereas there are centers for special education. We have another call online. Thank you for calling. I'm sorry you could not keep on holding, but please try again. As if these schools are warehouses. We have another call online. Thank you for calling. You're on the air. Hello? Hello? Yes, good evening. Good evening. Hi, Laura. Hi. Oh, it's a very important topic this evening. Thank you. Laura, um, I'm so interested in that topic. We're talking about morality in society. We are talking about raising our children. As a young parent, I'm, I'm, I'm saying young, because I raised five children, three boys, three girls, and two boys alone. The problem with us, young parents, we're not spending enough time with our children. That is one. When we have kids, we have to realize the kind of social life we used to live 
We cannot live that life anymore because our kids take part of that. Once again, when our children leave our home to go to school, some parents are not even there when their children go to school. Some of them, either they at work or either they elsewhere. Sometimes their children dress on their own and they go to school. So some parents don't even know how their children leave the house, far less if they will know when their children come back. But some, a little advice I will give some parents, when I raise my children, I know exactly what time you leave the house and what time you come back in the house. What you live with and what you have to come back with. If you have anything a friend gives you, I must know which friend, where that friend gets it, and how you have it, for sure. Secondly, children must make time for their homework. Some parents, when their children come, Mommy, I go on the field. And then you don't know where that child is. Sometimes you go to bed and you never see that child again till next morning. So a lot of problems that is in, in society now is because of us parents. And a lot of young parents still have time for their children. Don't, don't get me wrong. But some are really reckless. Second, poverty has a lot to do with it as well. Because some parents, they have to look for the bread for that child or look for that money for that child to go to school. You understand? Because things is not easy. It is not like before. Third, it's before it was one, one, the whole community to raise a child. Now you cannot tell a lot of young parents, you cannot tell them, oh, your son do this, do that to me. If you said that, you're in problem. You understand? Mm -hmm. It's a lot to do with society. It's a lot to do with the people that is God, that is ruling the people in society, the hierarchy that's in society. It starts from teachers and then um, conductors and then bus drivers. A lot of them have no respect for the young ones. So the young ones raising up the same way. It's a lot to do. And if we have to change that, we have a lot, a lot, a lot of work to do. But carry on the good work, my girl. It's, very, it's a very good topic. And I wish you all the best. Thank you Take very care much. And have a blessed night. Thank you very much. And, and you know, it, these, these are your thoughts. These are your thoughts. And this, this is why I enjoy doing this. Because we're creating the platform that make your stories our stories. We have another call online. Yes, good night, Laura. Oh, I was beginning to wonder that there was only one man in St. Lucia. Thank you for calling. Okay. I'm very happy to call your program tonight. Oh, it's not the first time I'm calling it. Mm -hmm. But I want to um, just say or make a little suggestion. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why I think there are many reasons, but one of them, or maybe a few of them, whereby our children today is going astray or they have completely gone astray because we as parents we also have gone astray mm. we Talk have given up that. we have give up the mantle so gone are the days when we used to be each other's keeper this is no longer existing everybody has become so selfish and so self-centered as a result of selfishness and self-centeredness, it has taken over. And nobody really cares about anybody anymore. It's all about me. We all care about our well-being. Mm -hmm. So our children today, what we were holding on to, our moral standards we were holding on to back then, we are beginning to allow it. We are beginning to allow it to just fall apart. And then the children now, uh, earlier on a lady called and she quoted some part of the Bible where it says, the generation of viper. Mm -hmm. But if we understand Jesus Christ, what he was saying really and truly, he was drawing to our attention what is really becoming of mankind if we don't take heed. Because God never sends any punishment be, uh, without he sends warning. But when we don't take heed, then the punishment comes. So today, what we are suffering with our children, it is as a result of we have now given up upon the good things that we knew, and we begin to accept what the kids are bringing to us. 
Right now, we, it's like we were raised a certain way. But our little children now who are going to school, sometimes you try your best. Listen to me carefully. You try your best to raise your child or your children in a perfect you know, way. However, because of their affiliating and associating with other children out there who are not properly raised, be it in school or other areas, they begin to adapt. But why can't, why can't these children who we say are raised perfectly, and, and maybe that's, that's why, you know, herein lies the problem, the perfection that we expect of our children. Mm -hmm. Why can't they be the influencers? Why can't they be the ones to influence the ones who come with the bad habits? Right? Why can't they be the ones who move, who shape and mold the others rather than they themselves being followers and, and being shaped and molded and groomed into the imperfection? Okay. I will give you one, one reason for that. You see, in order to do good or to behave the proper way, we have to always be checked upon. But you see, to do the bad things, nobody... Imagine, you having a child... <laughs> growing you don't have to teach him or her nothing that is bad and they will learn all the tricks when they begin to do things when they begin to do things whether at two or three years but the moment they begin to understand themselves and they begin to get the understanding and they want to have their way you don't have to teach them nothing that is bad Laura. so are you saying that deviant behavior is natural for human beings repeat that again deviant behavior is natural for human beings. Doing the it wrong is. thing, the bad thing, is natural. So are we then setting ourselves up to fail by expecting us to live by norms and mores in a society where we are bound to fail? You know, that we can't keep up with all the no. time. No, no, I, I don't want, uh, no, I'm not saying that we are bound to fail. I am saying in order for us to continue following the right path, it's like we have to always be checked upon. Because even in the scripture, you will realize some part of Romans, I think it is, where um, the, the, the man of God was saying, actually, the things he tried his best not to do are the things he falls short of daily in doing them. And the things he knows who, which is right to do, these are the things he falls short of doing all the time. So it is our, we have to understand this hmm. Body, this mortal body, it is, no, it is naturally a sinful. It is naturally a sinful thing. And hence is why even when you and I, if we know about Christianity, we will understand it takes a lot of prayer and supplication and spending good time in the Word of God for us to live as a Christian. It is not an easy thing. This is why Christ says, if one wants to be a follower of him, we have to take up, pick up the cross daily and follow him. Now, let's, let's not draw uh, away from the topic. So, therefore, I am saying, with our kids today, we as parents, we have an obligation to make it our duty to teach them the right thing. Even when they do not want to hear us, we still have to teach it to them. But today... Majority of parents, I'm telling you, Laura, it is the reality. That because I am just 40 years of age, I started life, I could say, late. Because I only have one child and she's just turning three, imagine. I lived on my life, most of it as a Christian. From 15, 13, 14, 15, I started following Christ. I took Christ serious, so I tried to avoid fornication and all of these things. Mind you, I'm not perfect. However, I am just saying... When, so therefore, I am saying, with all of these things, what happens is that we, as the parents, the things we know that is good, that is right, that is of justice, that is of righteousness, we have to always preach it to them. Okay, thank you so much. We have to leave it here for now. Yeah. I could, could, could listen to you all night, but I have to leave it for, here for now because we, we have a this few more wonderful. calls. Thanks.
But thank you so much for calling. Yeah. And you know, I, I enjoy so much when the men call because especially when we have topics like this, because a lot of the times they don't call. Um, but it's very interesting some of the things that he said. And one of the main things that I got out of that is that we're imperfect, that we tend naturally, generally, to want to do the things that we deem are imperfect or um, uh, deviant. Now, so I'm thinking if that is the case and we're, you know, a friend of mine always says practice makes permanent. And she never says perfect, but she always says permanent. So if we have to practice all the time doing the right thing, is the right thing really the right thing? We have another call online. Thank you for calling. You're on the air. Hey, hi. Good evening, Laura. How are good you? evening, sir. You're on the air. Thank you for calling. I'm hey. good, thanks. Well, I don't know where to start, but um, I, think, I think too many of us have given up. Mm. Have you given up, though? No, no. That's what I'm telling you. Mm. I cannot. I mm. cannot because... You know, if, if, if some of us do give up, the entire society collapses. Mm -hmm. I mean, I walk past this, I walk on the streets, I sit outside my home sometimes, and children pass, they don't tell you good afternoon, they don't say good morning, you know, they see something on the floor, they don't pick it up, you know. But when you, when you look beside them, their parents are right there, and they're not instilling any discipline in the children. You know, you drive, you drive into a school and some, you know, a child stands in the middle of the road, there are teachers standing there, and they wouldn't tell the children, get out. You know, it's, you, know you need to give, you know, allow the vehicle to pass. So there's a total breakdown, and I think you, you're right. I think you're starting the conversation, but I think it needs to get a little bigger than this. I think we need to have, you know, town hall meetings on, on this thing. We need to d develop you know, a strategy to go into the schools, to go into, to get parents, actually, girls who, who are pregnant or, and who are about to give birth, let them know that it's their responsibility. Well, let me not exclude the men also, huh? Absolutely um, not. You know, to, to raise their children properly. And I think that's the problem. A lot of kids right now are just having kids. A lot of young people are going into teaching. I'm not saying that they're not educated, but it's not just about teaching children a subject matter. It's more teaching them and being a guide to them also. Let, let me you stop know? you here. Let me just, uh, we, let, let's have a, 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 you just mentioned something there that really picked my interest because that's one of the things that I've always marveled at. We would say that a child, a, a young person who has left secondary school, gone to A-level, perhaps not yet have gone to teacher's college, but go, gone into teaching at 18. And we'll say, oh, but this is young and they're just a few years older than the students that they're teaching and blah, blah, blah. And then that's too young and all of that. But when my mother was at school, the persons, the teachers who were teaching them were perhaps students who had just left school. Perhaps they were still teachers, um, students who were in school as teaching aides, and they were respected. And you dare not talk back at them or disrespect them or talk back to them or anything like that. And at 15 as a teacher's aide or as a, as a, 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 a how do you call it, a, a, a student teacher, they got the respect that a lot of 25-year-old teachers cannot command. And I wonder why that is. I would have, I would have actually told, told you in Creole, you know, a little slang there. <laughs> I would like to be different. But they are the older folk, and you, 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 I think we're from the same era, you know, yes, there were those persons, and I, I, can, I can recall a lot of names of people who just came from school and went into teaching, but the, their parents molded them properly in those days, right? The, 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 when, you, when I go, I mean, I, I visit the, the, my alma mater, the, the Freeford Comprehensive School every day, and when I see teachers walking, you know, with, with skin-tight clothes on them, teaching children, what messages are you sending? Now, in again, past, I want... I want not allow you to leave the house like that. No, oh, but actually, I had a conversation with my mom about that a couple of days ago. And I said to her, Mommy, you used to wear all these little shorts. Cause she said, oh, but that was, that was fashion. And I said to her, so if I had... Um, all these years, you mean if I had worn one of these short skirts because it was in fashion, you'd be okay with it? She's like, well, that's what's in fashion. But I think one of the things that sh she brought across was, I know my children and I know I raised them. And you know how people often say, the clothes, you're wearing the clothes and the clothes is not wearing you. I think the whole comportment, I think the whole attitude, I'm wearing the clothes. Because I looked at some pictures of teachers who taught me at school, but when they were younger teachers, like, in the, the 70s and 60s, they wore the short, short skirts to school, but they always commanded respect. And I wonder why that is. And I wonder why it is now that these teachers who wear the skin, skinny pants or the short skirts, or even the men too, where they wear the low rider pants with the, 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 coke, the, 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 you know, the skinny pants, what, and they're much older then, 
why don't they command the respect? And I, I think it has a lot to do with upbringing. I, I think it has a lot to do, to do with pride. I think it has a lot to do with, with discipline. Um, last week I was at the convent, and I mentioned in the convent because I thought it was amazing that there was a teacher who was trying to get the children the girls attention and she wasn't getting it and there comes sister rufina and she said girls clap once and everybody just clapped and she said clap twice and everybody just and i said like, what is this but then it shows the the respect and the deference that they have to sister rufina that they may not have for maybe another teacher or maybe they are not have for somebody else out there and again, it's discipline. It's how you communicate with the children. And obviously, Sister Rufina has a connection with these girls because they speak of her fondly. They don't speak of her with trepidation. And I wonder why can't we get that formula and pass it on to the other schools, perhaps, or even in our clubs and our communities and our organizations? What do you think about that? Uh, you're right, and it's more about how we mold people. I don't want to hog, the, hog, hog your, your line all night, but what I can tell you is mm -hmm. sometimes I lecture at the schools, right, in different mm -hmm. subject matters, which is non, um, you know, non-academical. Mm -hmm. And I see teachers, I see um, students passing teachers, they don't say hello, they don't, mm -hmm. you know, walk past them, even in the classroom, they disrespect them. But when I walk in, I don't demand the respect, you know. I think my deportment, the way I look, the way I dress, my attitude when I walk into that classroom, people say good morning, they sit properly, they don't drag, because they know I'm going to stop them and tell them, hey, you're doing it wrong and correct them. So I think a lot of us have given up on the attempt to mm. correct children, we have given up on, on being this stalwart in society who will demand respect from children because we, fear, we fear the parents, we fear what people will say, we fear retaliation, mm. but we must not give up. I just need to leave that with you. We must, we must not give up. We must continue molding these children because, you know, uh, a, a, a niece of mine, you know, talking about um, a program last, uh, last week, she said, oh, I want to include some general segment mu music. But I said, no, 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 it's, it's wrong. And, and the music behind it, yes, is right, but the message, okay, the words of it is totally wrong, so you should not. And she had a hard time understanding what I was saying. And I tell her, look, you cannot be promoting sex, you know, and you're doing something for independence. Mm -hmm. it, it, just, it sends a wrong message to the kids below you, the, the children who lack the understanding or, or lack the, the, the method of understanding the message in some of those, those songs. So it's, it's just wrong altogether. So, you know, we need to start moving our children, sitting with them, talking to them. And I must admit, parents do not spend enough time speaking to children before, after school, on stand Sundays, bringing them to church. So the entire, there's a whole breakdown that we need to repair. Thank you, Laura. Thank you so much for calling. I, 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 I kind of like this conversation. Not everything I agreed with him on, but obviously, I mean, lots of points for, for discourse and, and discussion. I like the fact that he said, don't give up. And I think that it's so true. A lot of us have given up. And maybe that's why they, they don't get that respect that they deserve. We have another call online. Thank you for calling. Hello. Hello, good night. Hi, good night. Yeah, Laura, first mic mm -hmm. on your show. On oh, you're our last caller. Okay. Welcome. I just make it short and nice though, because mm -hmm. you talk about convent. I just been in convent too, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I know how Sister Finner do the, do the trend, okay? Where are What, I want to ask you a question now. What raising the children properly? Tell me how to raise a child properly. Well, that's the question I've been asking all because night long. The, but let me say, whether what you, we believe that, you know, sending children to school, okay? You understand that? Mm-hmm. Um, school, from school, lessons, okay, lessons, homework, back home again, come and collect them at the, at the school with their car, drive them up, bring them home, they're playing with nobody, they're, they're having communication, if any, anything, it's just home, school, work. That's, most people, that, they think that raising a child properly, you know. Mm. But that's not been wholesome, is it? The children doesn't play again like before, meet friends, have, have fun, everything is, everybody looking for competition, my child must get 15 subjects. Children only learn. Children only know, know how to live now is to pass exams. But from that, they don't know nothing again. I've been in the schools. Most children you think are really educated. Not educated, you know. They could pass in exams. They could memorize good. They could memorize a lot. Okay? But they're not smart. That's, you know, I'm that, that's you key. I'm telling that's you. That's key. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I've, I've, I've been with children at my own club. Okay? And sometimes, you know, people believe that when you talk hard, sometimes you're talking hard, if you're rah, 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 but in your heart, you're a nice person, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you, when you pull each other's attention to make them know that when you're on the field or at school, that will be serious, you know. But sometimes if you talk hard for them, them children, the parents say, 
Oh, I'm not talking hot. That guy talking hot to you. What kind of thing, you know? They're so I sensitive, you know? They're so sensitive. Yeah, you hear me nothing. But to see some, um, no, some children going to Avermel School, no? they, they, they're collecting bus by the Sunset Bridge, you know, to go to school. You know, mm -hmm. you know? they're paying their money to take bus to go to school. They're paying holding their hands. I just been sometimes in the school, no? parents come and feed their children, no? feed, actually take the spoon and feed their children. I'm telling you. So not giving them a, the children a no. chance to grow and to be their own person. They're no. coddling them. So, so they believe in their raising children properly. Mm -hmm. But they're not raising children properly, mm -hmm. no. To me, that's abuse of the children, you know. Mm -hmm. Because That's an interesting way of looking at we, it. That abuse means because every time it's... For them, such a Miss uh, Miss Laura, you, you have no... You, them children have one of those girl days or boy days, you know. And then you from school. From school. is homework. No, lessons. For lessons, homework, and back to school again, you know. Most children, that's how children <laughs> looking like. Just mm -hmm. check the schools now. But imagine kindergarten have lessons. Grade two or grade three have minimum exams. Can you exam. imagine? Med yes. Yeah. Grade two. You get two. That's about seven years. You have minimum eight years. You have minimum exams for what? Right now, they have SBAs in primary school, you know. I couldn't believe it. In, prime, in infant school, they have yeah, SBAs. SBA, so what do you think? Yeah. So what do you believe? This trend? Yeah. They, they just... Packing the children's brains with, with, with them, with them uh, um, academic schoolwork. And the children never had their child days. So when they're going um, older now, you know what happened now? They, they'll go, go, when they escape, is sex, rum, sex, ganja party. You understand? Mm. Rum, just check children now. Rum, sex, ganja party. Wow. Okay? All, all the good, you, you could have all your good programs. You might get one, two of them. But the majority doesn't have any program for from Even our leaders. For Independence Day or any day they have in there, just put a bun. All children there, you know, miss. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's what you give them rum and, and, and food, you mm -hmm. know? So, so the children will raise if that kind, kind, uh, kind of attitude, you know what I mean? So, sports to, 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 for them, sports are nothing, you know? Sports are nothing. But Absolutely. How do we treat in sports? But thank you for calling because we have yeah. to we have to end there. Yeah. But okay. thank you. I so I, more and more, you know. Thank you. I, I keep calling because we'll have yeah. more of these shows, and I would really like to hear more more from you and your ideas okay. and your you thoughts. I have a lot of ideas, but I've been in school, I've been with children, and not now, you know. I've been with kids working, mm -hmm. not now. For my entire life, I work about eighteen years voluntarily working with kids. Nice. Never get a cent. And most people believe it's money's money there. Sometimes, if I'm not on the field, I, I on the field I have a less train training. To me, I've, I've been saving a child's life. Maybe that Absolutely. girl or boy, maybe going tongue in tongue, maybe going to uh, be a prostitute and going to have a little bit of saving her, you know? That's what I like, you know? Great. Help Thank you keep. so much. Okay, and keep yeah. doing what you're doing because I think <laughs> I, it's, I, I think I, it's I, commendable. I'll keep that, Miss. Thank I'll you. Always. Okay, yeah. Thanks. All right. But it, it's so important for all of us, and I think that's the, the, the common thread that we hear. And, and, and I like some of his comments in that. Are we really educating our children to make them, uh, what's the point of education? Is it so that they can pass an exam or is it that so that they can become meaningful contributing members of society in all facets? Are we socializing our children properly at school? Because they're spending most of their times in school. Are we really utilizing the education system to the fullest potential or are we just training children how to skip through? cram for an exam, pass the exam and together there and to say, okay, I have this paper, I have this validation and so I deserve to, or I, I should command this sort of a salary. But what are we teaching them? How well adjusted are they? How do they become great employees or even great employers? You know, all of those things. And it's an unfortunate and that is an unfortunate situation where we don't have enough time to go and to delve into that. So perhaps we'll do a part two of it. Who knows? This is the platform where we make your stories, our stories, so we'll always come. Before we end, I just want to run through a couple of our WhatsApp messages because I don't want to feel our, let our WhatsAppers feel that they're left out. Um, we have uh, somebody here from the graveyard saying, I have started a youth program because of exactly what's happening right now. Um, when something happens, I've always said, when something happens at schools, then you're hearing everyone. What's there to prevent those acts? And this is a question I've been asking. What are we doing to, to prevent 
and not intervene when something has already or react to when something has already happened. Some of these young people need to need people like the, the WhatsApper to make them know the dangers out there and how it w could affect the rest of their lives. It only takes a second to lose your life or your freedom or your life. You lose your life or your freedom. Those young people get attracted to the bad. They just want to fit in the wrong places. I went down that road and it cost me so much. It's okay sometimes to blame parents, but some like me were still kids when I had my first child. So what next? Not all teenage mothers can deal with bringing up a child. What is in place for this? Most give up easy. And, and I think that is in line with what the, the uh, penultimate caller was saying. We give up. Or, you know, we, we just at that point where we've, we've given up. Um... And a lot of them are just enjoying the program and, 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 and think it's timely. And I, I want to hear your contributions. Someone said solutions have been dwelling on badness. And now they're setting into our society. The setting in our society is to earn a bad deed to be recognized. And there is seemed to, uh, a respect. The fact is the ills of children having children. Soon there will be tattoos on toddlers. Just wait. But kids have been having kids. For long, but what it really is, it, is it as a child, is it a mentality or is it the number of years that you have been on earth? So that's another question that we have to, um, that we have to think about. Somebody said, I've been listening and as a primary school teacher, the problem starts from small. Our young children don't go to church, our parents spoil them. And some give up on their child. They don't know what to do. Young parents don't have parenting skills and are not around for the children, to name a few. And, and, and it's so true. Um, somebody else, I suggest you can continue this topic next week. I look forward to that with your guest speaker, of course. Awesome topic further to that. I am a male, as I notice, less male callers. And it's true. We, have, we get less male callers sometimes. Um, like this time, I expected to hear a lot more male callers. And it's indicative of, is it, is it indicative of fathering? Is it that parenting is left to the mothers and not um, the fathers? Our fathers shucking their responsibilities. Somebody said, I both agree and disagree with a lot of the contributions. I'm a parent of two boys myself. And because of that, I try hard to ensure that they grow into productive citizens. I do not beat my children because, quite frankly, I think I endured enough of that abuse when I was a child. But my forms of discipline are strict and firm. I have little to no cause to give directives twice because they have been brought up to understand what is expected of them. The boys are 10 years apart and are doing well. But it's not for the lack of competing with many outside forces. My first son is an honor roll student and the head prefect at his school. The second one was just voted student of the week in his class. All of this without any beatings. I think the problem with parents today is that they do not teach children where boundaries are from an early age. And I quite agree with that. And then try to dictate that after children start to get wayward. Parents are not friends with their children. And that must be understood from the get go. Um... Some other person, another person said, yes, there's very serious issue with drug, drug addiction. Wellness inund is inundated with um, cases. Parents are in denial. And you hear some of the silly, silliest ways that they describe a child with mental issues. And maybe one of these shows, I will share some of those with you. It is ridiculous. You're not doing anybody any good list of all yourself. Uh, marijuana is the drug of choice. Um, and there's so much more that we can just go on and on, but we're plumb out of time. Um, but before we go, I promised I wanted to talk about something that is near and dear to me, and that's kidney disease. Um, World Kidney Day is coming up, and I don't know why it is on International Women's Day. So next week, we have International Women's Day coming up and World Kidney Day. I don't know how I'm going to do the two, but um, yeah, they're both on the same day. And this year's theme for Kidney Awareness Day is kidneys and women's health. So I guess that's how they marry the two. Kidneys and women's health include value and power. Um, and just keep listening for the updates in the upcoming week because these are two things that are near and dear to me, kidneys, and women. So please be safe, take care of each other, and remember always the answer resides within us. We can't afford no longer, we can't afford no longer 
to say it's not in my backyard. It has nothing to do with me. Because as you would have heard from a lot of the contributions, everybody raised the kids right. Everybody raised the kids right. But somebody didn't. And that one bad apple can spoil every other apple that they can get in, that they come in contact with. Because as one of Carla says, it's not in our nature to be good. It's not in our nature to want to do the right thing unless somebody tells us to do it. But then again, what is the right thing? What we're doing, is it the right thing? Or are we, are we just emulating somebody's concept of what is right? Food for thought. See you next week. Bye-bye. What happens now?